I've noticed recently a lot of the other Paradox games, so like CK3, uh, like EU4, Stellaris, they get multiple big DLC drops every year. Yet, Hearts of Iron only gets one. And Hearts of Iron is the most popular Paradox game. So why are we getting less DLCs, I hear you ask? It beats the shit out of me, I have no idea. So maybe we can give Paradox some ideas of different things that they could do. If you guys have any ideas of stuff you want from future DLCs, let me know below in the comments. Share this video to your local Paradox representative. The DLC I want the most is a Central and South American DLC. Mainly South America, but Central and South American DLCs. I want it to be a case where there's something to do down here, particularly in like a non-historical circumstance. Now, a lot of you might be saying, oh, but like Camo, South America did nothing in World War II. Not true. They actually contributed quite a lot. Pretty much every South American country ended up uh, either at war with the Allies, uh, with the Axis, sorry. They ended up either at war with the Axis or like abstaining. Pretty much just Argentina and Chile that still had diplomatic relations with the Axis. Most other countries cut that off with them. Pretty much as soon as the US was joining, Central and South America were heavily reliant on the Allies for their trade because that pretty much all got cut off with the Axis. It actually led to quite a big power imbalance and a lot of influence from the United States was being pressed down here. After the war, the US kept meddling, doing their banana republic fuckery down here. These countries are still suffering the consequences from it. Maybe there's some kind of power struggle with these South American countries where, as they realize that they're now heavily reliant on uh, allied trade and allied support, maybe they kind of band together and they start to become a bit more self-reliant. Or maybe they challenge the global hegemony of like the US and the Soviets being the two world powers. And maybe you can formulate like a South American supercontinent or something like a super country. You know, and also there's a lot of like historical gripes between each of these countries. Uh, Chile, for example, was worried with all the lend leases that the US was sending down that Peru and Bolivia would try to reclaim territory that like Chile had taken from them in the 1800s. Maybe even Argentina is so sympathetic to the Axis, they start taking over and influencing their neighbors and they start to take South America for themselves, distracting the US and the allies, threatening any like any trade and like like transport through the South Atlantic, securing resources for the Axis. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do there. But yeah, a lot of these countries contributed uh, a lot more than we really give them credit for. The US was basically then leasing a bunch of stuff to South and Central America as well, trying to sort of secure that area from any Axis influence. These countries did participate like militarily in the war. So Brazil ended up sending 25,000 soldiers to fight in like Italy and in uh, in the Mediterranean. So that's like two whole divisions. That's a lot for a country that like wasn't really directly threatened. So with Mexico, they didn't necessarily send troops themselves. They allowed like troops that wanted to, to serve in the US armed forces. Um, and apparently as much as 250,000 Mexicans served in that way, which is insane. The Mexican Air Force fought in the Philippines. So yeah, these countries weren't like bystanders by any means. So there's definitely something to be done there. In the Caribbean, that was also a bit of like a, not necessarily a flashpoint, but that was an important area. Not only was there a bunch of trade going through, but also uh, Curacao in like the, like the Dutch controlled area of Curacao, that that was the largest oil refinery in the world uh, at that point in time. Apparently Cuba as well had quite an important part with like attacking German U-boats. You wouldn't really think Cuba, like they don't come to mind when you think of uh, World War II. And even in like a non-historical context, you know, you play as Peru, there's a path to form, like reform the Incan empire or, you know, maybe even Guatemala, Honduras or someone, they can reform like the Aztec empire or something. I think that there's potential here, particularly in the non-historical setting, as we've sort of seen with the Sweden dev diary that they've just put out. If you guys check out my video on that, you know, they've added in avenues where Sweden can join the war, like even going through the historical path of staying democratic. I'm sure there might be something similar you could do with the South American countries where they actually contribute militarily a bit more, um, particularly navally. Imagine the big Colombian fleet uh, taking out the Japanese Navy and uh, over here in the Pacific. That's just like some ideas. Obviously, there's a lot more history here than I really am aware of. It would just be so cool to see something like that happen. So obviously, aside from a South American DLC, which I think I made it quite clear I really want and I think would be awesome, 
obviously the Middle East and, um, you know, like the Arabian Peninsula and stuff that has been a little bit neglected aside from, uh, you know, the joint invasion of like Iran and, you know, British and Iraq and stuff like that. I don't know a great deal about this region, but I think it would be really cool to get them involved somehow. Taking back the British colonial possessions, reclaiming the Middle East uh, and, you know, like around Egypt and the um, Suez Canal and stuff like that. Obviously, like Iran having a focus tree to create Persia, like Iraq with Mesopotamia and stuff. I also think that these countries need to be a bit more powerful. Three factories and six factories in countries that are like the cradle of civilization itself. Come on, bro. Like, I mean, I'm sure historically that might be a bit more accurate compared to how developed like the Western countries were. But oh, man, like civilization was literally founded here. I feel like we it's criminal that we don't have a focus a focus tree that allows us to you know rise up again yeah even like oman yemen saudi arabia like i don't know what they could call it but like afghanistan iran iraq saudi arabia yemen oman they all need their own thing they all need a tree uh they all need trees to kick the bloody west out and seize this area for themselves maybe they get overlordship over the raj and stuff like that maybe they like liberate these countries um sort of similar to how ethiopia can liberate a bunch of african countries and stuff this is another thing that i was going to talk about I don't know what to call it, but basically in my mind, it's the idea of like focus trees for the others or for the forgotten about countries. Belgium sitting here all vanilla. So sad. A Luxembourg tree, an Austria tree. They they have nothing here too. Uh, even Albania. Albania is sitting here with their default naked tree. Ireland as well, right next to the UK. Northern Ireland sitting there ready for the taking. Like maybe as Germany starts to get up on the rise, Ireland take the opportunity to reclaim their their territory here, throw them with the Axis. Ethiopia has something to go through and sort of liberate all of the African colonies. Why can't Liberia as well? Like literally a state founded in Africa for freed men and all around them is essentially the slavery of their people through western colonialism why can't they go through and start demanding the french give up this territory and the british return ghana to ghana and stuff like that you know what i mean why can't liberia then have some insane focus where you can take over the united states as liberia like that would be so funny to see like imagine you're just sitting in a multiplayer game with your mates and then all of a sudden this becomes liberia siam is sitting here right in the middle of all of this conflict, they literally joined the war yeah, to help Japan, kind of because they were forced to, but you know, why doesn't Siam have a focus tree? Why can't they form the, there was an emperor, empire here, was it the Khmer Empire? Something, you know, let, it, let us do something, man. Honestly, even the Philippines sitting here with their own little, like with nothing, Philippines has got to have an opportunity to break through from the US. They've got to be able to take over some of these colonial possessions, whether it's liberating them or taking them for themselves. Yeah, I do quite like the idea of a focus tree for the others, giving us just a bit more gameplay for these smaller nations, which are just a fault, particularly the ones in Europe, but also outside of Europe too, you know? So yeah, I guess in summary, South America, that's top of my list. That's number one, numero uno. Number two, Middle East like Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, all those guys, give them some love, Afghanistan. Then number three, the others, the forgotten countries, your Belgium, your Luxembourg, your Austria, Liberia, Siam, whoever else, Albania, fuck it, give them one too. I'm literally just brainstorming here, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Chuck it in the comments what DLCs that you guys would like to see from Paradox next. Hopefully we can get some more coming out sooner. Like I said, all the other Paradox games get a lot more love than Hoi does, so I think we deserve some more regular DLCs, so let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.